Hey friends, I'm back. I want to discuss risk in the video today because I lost a lot of money this week. A stock I own since 2010, it's now down 63% from its 52 week high. I've lost a significant amount of money in this stock this very week. I want to go through my experience and I want to share some things that I have learned from this very experience. And I also want to share in my personal situation, what I'm doing in my portfolio to really take risk into account. Because I believe right now in 2023, there is more risk than ever before as a dividend stock investor. There is more risk than ever before, in particular, choosing and selecting and owning individual stocks. Because as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, I'm highlighting just a few different types of risk factors, but I see right now environmental risk, geopolitical risk, and litigation risk overall. I see heightened amounts of risk in each of these categories. So from an environmental standpoint, there are a lot of disasters happening. It's very sad. It's very unfortunate. It's very terrible. My heart goes out to anyone impacted by any kind of environmental catastrophe. Now, that is the perfect way to start the video today because I am discussing personal finance. And I'm here on YouTube. I'm lucky to be here. I'm lucky to be just discussing monetary loss because it is possible to lose so much more than money. And so certainly I want to preface the video today that I'm discussing monetary loss, but of course this is not the most important thing. Um, human life, our environment, our world, of course all of this is more important than what I'm discussing today, but this is a channel about personal finance, hence the topic of the video today. But there is heightened environmental risk in our world right now. We've all seen it in the news with all of these horrible catastrophes happening. Now there's also heightened geopolitical risk right now because we're seeing all kinds of geopolitical activity around our world that could put the types of companies that you and I own possibly at risk. I own a lot of companies that do business internationally. I'm going to talk about Starbucks in the video today, but Starbucks is relying on China right now for a lot of its growth. Now, if anything happens between the relationship of China and the U.S. that deteriorates that relationship, this could put huge risk on Starbucks and my investment in Starbucks. So that's just one example of geopolitical risk. I see a ton of risk these days with litigation. There's so many lawsuits against big companies right now. The very example I'm going to discuss in the video today further along in the video, the one where I lost a ton of money this week, it looks like that one could get tied up in litigation, but also they're tied up just in environmental hazard, environmental um, tragedy, an unfortunate, terrible tragedy that happened. But one example of litigation, for example, is Johnson & Johnson. This is one of my largest companies that I own, and they are tied up in a talc powder lawsuit that just will not go away. They keep trying to settle. The judge keeps kicking it back. That is one that is facing litigation risk. And so there's a ton of risk out there in the stock market right now with individual stock ownership in particular. And it's terrible. And again, I want to preface this video that I am talking about this from an investor's standpoint. But of course, my heart goes out to anyone affected by any kind of tragedy, whether it be geopolitical, environmental related, or litigation related. Uh, a product may have not worked as they had anticipated and could have caused issues. My heart goes out to all of uh, those folks out there around the world. But I want to continue in the video today. The next topic that I want to go through is just my concentration of risk. I have so much concentration of risk in my portfolio. I talked about Starbucks. As you can see on the screen right now in front of you, Starbucks represents about 11% of my portfolio. Let's say that things between the U.S and China deteriorate. If Starbucks stock gets cut in half, I could lose 5.5% of my entire portfolio through that single stock. I'm trying to paint the picture here that broad diversification is so critical. It's so critical. And I can say I've probably become a little too concentrated in Starbucks stock. Given my risk profile, given where I'm at in my investing career, I just can't afford at this point in my career really to take huge amounts of losses on a position so big. 
given our geopolitical backdrop right now that could be a little bit shaky. And so that's something that I need to think about in my own portfolio on a go forward basis. But there's others, as you can see on the whiteboard here, Johnson & Johnson, my number two largest stock. Boy, that one represents 9.5% of the portfolio. So in theory, if that thing got cut in half, I could lose 4.75% of the portfolio just from that single stock alone. PepsiCo, another one. You may think, hey, PepsiCo, there's not a lot of risk there, but there is. They sell salty snack foods and soda. We all know there's this backdrop in our society right now of litigation. What if someone sues PepsiCo and wins as it pertains to, hey, Pepsi, you caused all this obesity in society. You caused bad health in society. Personally, I believe that consumers should be thoughtful. They should make their own decisions. They should eat and drink and consume such beverages and products in moderation as a special treat. But we all know out in society, that is not always the case. And what if there were some kind of litigation risk with PepsiCo? Well, PepsiCo represents about 9% of my portfolio. And so if that one just hypothetically got cut in half, I could lose 4.5% of my portfolio value overnight. McDonald's, which possibly faces some of the similar risks of PepsiCo, it represents 8% of my portfolio in value. And so if that one got hit with a lawsuit that um, was successful against them, for example, I could lose 4% of my portfolio value overnight if that one got cut in half. And so you can see Starbucks, it has some geopolitical risk. I would say J&J, it's got some litigation risk. Um, Pepsi and McDonald's, those ones really have, I would say, litigation risk. And environmental risk, I don't know if any of these ones contains a ton of environmental risk, but I'm gonna share that example in the video today because I lost a ton of money on uh, that particular stock. But I wanna keep going, what am I doing in my portfolio? How am I de-risking my portfolio? What am I doing to lessen risk? Because I am getting to a point in my portfolio where I don't wanna have so much concentration of risk. I'm also realizing I'm using dividends now. I'm using them more than ever before to pay bills. I'm using them more than ever before to rebuild the emergency fund right now. I am really relying on the dividends. Simultaneously, I'm getting older and I have more and more financial responsibilities for our family and for our kids that are getting older um, and have more expenses related to their education, towards their activities. I cannot afford to have a single company, especially one of the larger ones in my portfolio, just get cut in half. And so what am I doing to de-risk my portfolio? Largely, I am in investing in SCHD. This is an ETF that represents, there are about 100 dividend stocks, and this is the Dow Jones uh, Dividend 100 index that it tries to replicate, and the index here targets stocks dividend stocks that have a track record of increasing dividends. These stocks have a um, track record of being kind of value oriented. They're trading at a reasonable valuation. These are companies that have a strong uh, track record of success. So it tries to algorithmically choose and select the best value-oriented dividend growth stocks. Now with SCHD, the largest position right now is Amgen. And Amgen represents about 4.5% of SCHD. So theoretically, if I had all my money in SCHD and that thing, uh, Amgen, for example, got cut in half, there was some huge catastrophe with Amgen, well, I could lose, um, in theory, about 2.25% of the portfolio overnight. And so there's certainly concentration of risk even within SCHD but nothing like my 11% that I have in Starbucks. But what I'm doing is I am really investing a lot now these days in SCHD. And it takes a lot to influence me to put money anywhere else as I build up that position until SCHD represents say 20 or even 30% of my overall portfolio. It's gonna take quite a bit to influence me to take the same dollars and invest them elsewhere. That's what I'm doing. Now also, I am investing, I have invested, I'll probably continue to invest some money in treasury bonds as um, the interest rates are so high right now. And as long as the interest rates are high, they remain high, I use that as a way to hedge my dividend stock portfolio as well. And so that's one other method. 
And I really rely upon the broad-based diversification I have in my stock portfolio. And quite frankly, it is that broad-based diversification that um, made the impact of the uh, stock collapse this week a little bit um, less than it otherwise would have been if I had a more concentrated dividend stock portfolio. And so the diversification is so critical for me. So now I want to get into the example, what happened this particular week. Now, before I even do that, you probably all know what it is because it's national news right now. Um, my family and I, we love Hawaii, we love Maui, we visit there um, all the time, we have over the years, and it is uh, just something that has brought tears to our, our eyes to see what has happened in Lahaina in Maui. It is devastating. Uh, the wildfire that uh, unleashed there is unlike anything that um, I have ever seen, um, and as it has been covered on uh, TV and in the news. And my heart, my family's heart goes out to everyone in Maui, and especially the families that have been affected through the devastation of this particular event. And of course, our heart goes out to those that not only lost property, but more importantly, lost uh, loved ones in this devastating fire. And so, of course, the video today is not... Um, you know, meant to to underplay what has happened that is so much more important than money. But this is a finance channel and I do want to discuss this topic because we are seeing more natural disasters in our world than ever before. And companies could be uh, responsible and held accountable. We don't know what happened yet in this wildfire, but certain um, people are alleging that Hawaiian Electric, a company that I own, may be to blame. There is uh, no conclusive evidence or proof or anything like that yet, but the um, investigations are starting. How did this happen? Why did it happen? And uh, some believe that it could have been a power line, power poles that fell down in those terrible winds that could have ignited and sparked wildfire in Maui, where the landscape, unfortunately, has been very dry uh, this particular season. And so as you can see on the screen in front of you right now, I want to share just a few metrics. And so you can see the charts alone uh, show exactly what's happened. The stock now is trading below my initial purchase price from 2010. And so my 2010 purchase was in the very low $20 range. Well, now Hawaiian Electric is at $16. One of the reasons it has tumbled so far is S&P had downgraded this utility now to junk status because of possible litigation risk and damages that may be um, awarded against this particular company. It's 63% down from its 52 week high. And uh, I have the earnings and uh, PEs there, which are very low, but we don't know what earnings are gonna be at this point. I think analysts will need to reassess the entire situation based on the tragedy that has happened uh, this past week. Now it is trading at a dividend yield of 8.9%, but we don't know, will this dividend be cut or suspended? Most likely in the midst of everything going on. And so it's certainly not a reliable dividend to my opinion at least, and that 8.9% it may be reinstated at some point in the future if it does get suspended or cut, but as an investor here, I'm not really relying or counting on that particular dividend at this time. It's a slow and steady dividend grower at 3% per year on average, and the market cap is now $1.8 billion, which honestly may be uh, probably valuing this company just for the bank that they own. They own a bank called um, American Savings Bank, and it may just be that the utility is almost worthless at this point. Maybe it's more than worthless. It's a huge liability against the company, and um, maybe it's just valued as um, a bank at this particular juncture because of the um, tragedy. But here's the lesson. Utilities, regulated electric utilities, historically speaking, have been considered widow and orphan stocks. Now, I don't really like this term, but this is an old school terminology that I wanted to bring up because in the olden days, for those investors who are the most risk averse, the most sensitive to risk, typically in years of the past or decades of the past, financial advisors, they might consider stocks like this, a 
utility stock, a regulated electric utility as a suitable investment for those widows and orphans who may count on cash flow to pay bills. But how the tables have turned in 2023 were something that historically was considered a low risk stock. This is a company that has been in business since the late 1800s. Boy, what a track record that all of the sudden has collapsed overnight. Now, worth noting in this particular stock, it comprised before the tragedy about 2.86% of my portfolio. And now that it has plummeted, it's down at 1.3%. Now, worth noting, this is why I diversify to begin with. If this stock had represented, say, 10% of my portfolio, I would have lost 5% of portfolio value essentially overnight. But because I'm already diversified, I lost a tremendous uh, amount of money and um, a good chunk of the portfolio in this stock, but it could have had uh, been worse if I had invested more than 2.8% of the portfolio value um, in this particular stock. And so the um, point of this particular video and what I'm trying to share is, again, our world is changing. I'm seeing this in the stock market in real time. I think 3M is another example. I sold this stock not because of the risk associated with it, but because I needed to raise capital and it made sense to sell that particular stock. But that's yet another company that could have risks related not only to litigation, but to environmental as well, because there's talk about PFAS or these forever chemicals leaching into the ground and is 3M to blame or not? I don't know. The jury will decide, but that's a potential uh, risky uh, risk factors and risks that are associated with a dividend king that I don't think investors say 10 years or 15 years ago would have even contemplated this type of risk. And so that's the video today. Please go ahead and click the like button if you find this video informative, helpful, um, in your own investing journey, I would really appreciate it. And please don't forget to subscribe. I'm always sharing new videos here on YouTube. My heart goes out to everyone in Maui. Um, I'm praying for everyone's safety out there. And uh, put in the comments below, what do you think about these days, just the world we live in, everything happening, everything changing, these uh, risk factors. I guess a risk factor I never even mentioned was just risk of a marketing department making mistakes. We've seen companies taking marketing and sales sales strategies that have backfired on them in recent years and such companies uh, have plummeted. And these are the types of risks we couldn't have even contemplated decades in the past. So share in the comments below, what are some of the risk factors you see these days that maybe I didn't even cover? And what are you doing in your own portfolio to try and mitigate risk as much as possible? Thank you for watching today, everyone. I love you all. Before I go, in terms of full disclosure, I am long the stocks mentioned today. I'm long Starbucks, SBUX, Johnson & Johnson, j and I'm long um, PepsiCo, PEP, McDonald's, MCD, and Hawaiian Electric, HE. I'm holding on to that one um, in hopes that everything turns around, that Maui successfully rebuilds and that the utility can um, provide the best possible support. Um, but we'll see how this thing unfolds. I just don't know. Now, before I go, in terms of a friendly disclaimer, today's video, it's not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video, it's just for your fun and entertainment. If you're going to go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult your licensed financial advisor first. I'm just sharing my journey here on uh, YouTube for fun and entertainment. It's possible to lose money in the stock market. Please consult your licensed investment advisor before making any decisions. I love you all. I'll see you in the comments below and I'll see you in the next dividend stock investing video. Mm -hmm.